Welcome to Chop for Time. My name is Britt Bush. I'm here with uh, Pastor Ben, Pastor Thomas, and we are going to talk about sermon, all things sermon related and the things that we did not, maybe didn't get to yesterday. Wasn't much, right, that we didn't get to. You covered, what did you say, three chapters in 30 minutes? So three chapters, 35 minutes. I mean, what could I have possibly left nothing. out? Nothing. It was perfect. All is well. <laughs> I don't know. So let's, <laughs> nothing was left out. Let's let's get in. Let's start with a recap. Yeah, nothing was left out, including a 38 special reference. Yes. So, yes. You, know, you know, you've uh, done something. Two weeks, two weeks in a row. So we had Walk Like an Egyptian. Now 38 special. I'm looking forward to the next week. Southern Rock one week, 80s pop the previous week. I can't wait. There's got to be a country reference in there somewhere. (laughs) Somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, Yeah, recap. Um, You know, Genesis 42 through 44 talks about, gives us a story of um, Joseph's brothers. You know, the famine is beginning to hit. You know, the end of chapter 41 talks about the years of plenty that he interpreted the dreams being prophetic that was happening. Then the seven years of drought and famine began to hit. We find this record of the sons, Joseph's brother, being sent by their father, Jacob, or Israel, uh, to Egypt to get food, to buy some food. Encounter Joseph. Joseph knows it's his brothers. His brothers doesn't know that it's Joseph. So Joseph tests him, you know, tests him a little bit. Uh, just with some different things, you know, just a small little test winds up putting him in prison. I don't know. Um, but there's this series of tests that we see Joseph doing. And one of them is, hey, when you come back, I want to send you home with the grain. When you come back, I want you to bring your younger brother that you're telling me about. And they get home, they run out, they go through the food. They're telling their father, we need to go back. But we've got to bring Benjamin because we're telling you, if we go back without Benjamin, it's not going to turn out well. And, you know, initially he refuses. Eventually he relents and sends Benjamin back. And we find this, again, this ongoing testing. Uh, But what we also see above that is Joseph honestly being gracious to his brothers. When in the flesh and everything that we would have wanted to do, and probably Joseph would have been justified in our eyes doing, he could have punished his brothers for what they did to him. But he didn't. And we're going to see next week this big reveal, this moment of uh, Joseph revealing his identity to his brothers. But we see a, a very gracious welcome eventually you know, after the testing brings him into his hall, he feasts with them, which an Egyptian eating with a Hebrew was not culturally, you know, acceptable at that point. So we're seeing a lot of Jesus connections here between Joseph and our savior about us having to come to someone to save us ultimately from our despair, um, in our, our death, you know, this life and death situation that we find ourselves in and also crossing all types of cultural boundaries. Um, we being Gentiles as Christ comes to us and invites us, um, to dine with him. We looked at, um, the perspective of the brothers yesterday and a very unpopular word for most, well, all of us surrender. Mm. We saw four steps to surrender in these uh, chapters leading up to, um, you know, the, this point of, you know, God's gracious to us at the cost to himself. And he supplies grace to those who are surrendered to him. And that's, that's where we spent our time yesterday. The, uh, the four steps, I'd, I'd like to get into those just mm-hmm. in a little bit, but, uh, any Thomas, you you watched the message and yeah. initial thoughts. Yeah, one of the things that you said that really stood out to me for from the message was you sort of asked the question of like, do we ever stop and really uh, grasp the the significance of the grace that we've been offered? Because mm-hmm. um, I think all you know, 
I feel like I'm personally pretty good at understanding theologically. Theologically, the Bible says I'm a wretch, I'm not deserving of Christ. And I'm happy to say that. But to like feel that mm. is a whole different thing. Yeah. It just kind of got me thinking a lot of like, I'm happy to say those words, but am I happy to believe those words? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Which is two very different things. Because mm. um, I say that sort of thing all the time. It's like, yeah, of course I don't deserve any of this. I don't deserve the grace. I don't, you know, can't earn it, can't deserve it, any of that kind of stuff. Yet I still live a lot of the time trying to earn it and trying to deserve it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and usually I find in my life that it actually takes me to be pretty uncomfortably humbled for me to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, which is never something to pray for because that's not going to be a fun experience. Um, I kind of joked about this before about like, you know, we, we've kind of flipped the word humbled pretty significantly in our in our culture where it's like, oh, I got, I tell a story all the time about a friend of mine who got the opportunity to lead worship in front of 5,000 people and he nailed it. And he was like, yeah, it was such a humbling experience. I was like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great experience. It was a great, you know, really good experience. If you bombed on stage and did a terrible job, that's a humbling experience. Do you know what I mean? Um, or, you know, your wife leaving you, that's a humbling experience. Or, you know, being humbled is not as pleasant yeah. as... Well, and even, you know, serving faithfully, leading worship, preaching faithfully in front of eight to ten people. Mm -hmm consistently yeah that's humbling right yeah i mean yeah. to you know yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think you're on to something there yeah so it's it's yeah that those hum experiences that truly humble you where you're clearly put in your place of being a wretch <laughs> those are the moments where it's like ah oh, yeah that's that's the real time of recognizing oh my goodness i really do not deserve this grace that i've been offered um so yeah i find i say it all the time but i don't think i've believed it hmm. most of the times that i've said it so that was just a, a big reflective point for me and then i think the other thing was your key your main point um i can't remember how you worded it uh was it the, uh, this, God, the grace, god's grace at the cost to himself yes god's grace at the cost to himself that was just a phrase that as soon as you said it, i was like oh there's so much more to that phrase than i'm getting right now and i could just tell it's like there, there's a lot that could be extrapolated from that mm -hmm. from that phrase so just it was a good one got the brain thinking so they they kept you know he kept extending grace to them and they couldn't understand it. of course they couldn't understand it because they couldn't understand why these things the money the things were winding back up in their bag but they weren't seeing it from a grace standpoint mm -hmm. they were seeing it and especially the brother that they kept simeon i believe the the, the brother that they kept the, reuben I think. reuben yeah. no no, Reuben was the one. Yeah. Reuben was the one that Reuben was the one that so was like, "I told you." Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, the brother they kept until they right. brought Benjamin back. I, I bet he was not seeing a whole lot of grace there either yeah. at that time because it's hard to tell how long it took for them to get back. And to they bring, went through a lot of food. They went through a lot of food and to bring Benjamin back, and he's like waiting, you know, which is nothing compared to what Joseph had went through, obviously, but. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they didn't, they didn't see it as grace. They didn't understand, you know, at the time. Mm -hmm. And, but you know, not spoiler alert or anything, but they're, they're getting ready to, if you, if you read ahead, mm -hmm. they're getting ready to. So, um, so the four points of, of surrender that you brought up yesterday. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about those for a little bit. Okay. Um, number one fact check on you, Simeon was correct. Good call out of you. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, the four steps, the, the first one is to take responsibility for your actions. We see that happening whenever the brothers are thrown into prison, you know, whenever Joseph puts them into prison. And that's when the cries start going out. As I told you, this is this is because this is the blood that's on our hands because of what we did to Joseph. We're now being punished for that. Um, and, and there's this this awareness that we have to have of like it's our actions you know, and, and I tried to recognize the fact that like, listen, there are times and things that happen to people or groups of people that they're punished or they're affected by things that they did because of things they didn't do. We've seen that in our history. Um, you know, we see it in our current situation, but in a time that's so easily and readily victimizing ourselves, you know, it's, it's that's the card we want to initially play in order especially in our relationship with jesus we have to look and go it's because of my sin my actions what i've done i need to begin to take responsibility for these 
and we see that happening in there. The next one was to, you know, it grace, you know, grace continues to be built on when we recognize the need. You know, whenever we get to this place of num- number one saying, okay, we'll, we'll respond and we'll actually recognize um, that we got to take some responsibility. Then the next step of recognition is this is actually a need for me. And we usually arrive at that place of seeing our need whenever we've tried everything we can to meet that need. Uh, and we see that whenever they initially find that they have a need, they go and get it. They go get the grain and stuff. Then they come back and Israel, Jacob, is still reluctant to let them go back with Benjamin. And they're just like, we are going to die. Like, this guy is our only hope in order to live. So they recognize that they had need. Um, and then, you know, maybe the, the the most difficult one was we, we've got to relinquish control you have to relinquish control and that's where we finally see israel go okay all right i don't want to let benjamin go but if i am bereaved of all of my children because of this then i am bereaved if they take him and kill him then they take him and kill him he just let go of that peace that thing that he was holding so tightly to and he relinquished control uh, and that's true in our lives as well. And then the, the last step is that whenever we do these things, grace always has, we, we see a very gracious reception. And that's when they went back, they had Benjamin with them, and Joseph welcomes them into his hall to sit down at his table and dine with him. So we that those Christ connections pop into my mind with Joseph again, because Joseph was the only one that these brothers, that his brothers could go to, Mm -hmm. to, to fix this, you know, in their case, hunger, this issue, there's no, there was no sidestepping as is what's common in our our culture. You know, well, I know a guy who can maybe, you know, Joseph was it. And in, in the same way with our faith, Christ is it. Like we, like you said, you have to, it, it's him and him alone. So your actions toward him, your actions toward um, how you how you navigate life will directly affect your relationship with Christ. And it's you and you alone and nobody else. In their case, it was Joseph. Like Joseph, that was it. They had to do these things, whatever he asked them to do in order to be, to live, yeah. in order to be fed. And in the same way, same Christ connections with us. If we want to have life and, and, you know, as John 10, 10 says, have it more abundantly, we have to look to Christ and Christ alone. So, uh, Thomas. Yeah. Um, well, the, I mean, all the Christ, there's so many Christ connections throughout this, (laughs) this whole story in general. I think the one that kind of maybe just stood out to me the most, um, was, uh, well, there's, there's there's actually, there's a handful um but you know the testing i think is a really interesting point that we see going on and you mentioned it a couple of times mm-hmm. of um you know joseph testing the brothers and we kind of see jesus do a similar thing with the disciples yeah. um, and we see i mean we see the same thing of god doing it with the israelites all the time through from exodus onwards and especially going into the promised land you see a lot of these tests that that god places on the people of Israel and Jesus giving his disciples these opportunities to learn or to grow or to repent or to be honest or to, you know, all these sorts of different situations. And as much as Joseph isn't the Messiah, um, it, it is fascinating just to see all of these little interconnections and, 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 uh, pointers towards a Messiah type figure so early on. Um, and and the fulfillment of all of the kind of things whenever we get to to Jesus later on, um, but uh, you you kind of brought this up with the with the test. I thought it was interesting. I don't know if we're going to get into it today, but the you know it's 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 an interesting question to ask around the morality of the cup and the money being placed into bags. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can often get caught in the weeds. So I'm kind of glad that you, you know you didn't spend a huge amount of time diving on that because there's so much other stuff we could talk about. Um, 
but it was an interest. I just find that part of the story fascinating. Yeah. You know, if this, it's a very, you know, a lot of times you know Jesus talks about this too. But there, there's sometimes shrewdness is like not encouraged, but like complimented in scripture when it can bring about something good and fruitful. There's like this shrewd action sometimes you know, that Jesus calls us to be as shrewd as vipers, or is that something that Paul said? There's something. There was something good about being shrewd. It was a parable. There was a parable of the shrewd manager. That's what I'm mm. thinking of. Um, and it's always that weird blurry line, yeah. you know, um, that I thought is interesting. Yeah, well, and we have to, you know, always keep in focus too anytime we see Christ connections like with Joseph. This is, in, in ways, his life is a type of Christ or a foreshadowing yeah. of Christ, mm-hmm. not Christ himself. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, jo- Joseph's still a dude that struggles with, you yep. know, the, the sin problem and retribution and revenge and anger and, and all of these things. And I just, I, you know, one of the, the things, the wrinkles in there that, uh, you know, Zephanath Panea, that was Joseph's name. It's a dish at the Olive Garden, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> just keep cranking that Parmesan, man. Just I'll tell you when to stop. Uh, but that's the name that was given to him by Pharaoh. That was his Egyptian name. And that's what the names of, that's the name that his brothers know him by now currently. Mm-hmm. Two schools of thought here. One, either one of them would have been, in you know, really stand out and meaningful to his brothers as far as like what that name means in ancient Egyptian. Number one, the most popular and most accepted by the scholars is that it means that the Lord has spoken or the Lord is speaking. Hmm. That's what Pharaoh would have named him. The other thought is that it would be translated as the Lord has delivered a savior. And so either one of these, you know, that's how they knew him as. But if you, if you would think about that Christ connection, it, especially if it is the second one that the Lord has delivered a savior, what kind of impact do you think that would have had on Joseph's brothers that them just knowing him as that hmm. and not knowing I just, there's so many wrinkles and yeah. little looks ahead in this passage. I mean, I mean, biblically, if you kind of think about it, those two names are almost synonymous. Yeah. Like, you yeah, know, any, yeah. anytime we see the Lord speaking, there's acts of deliverance mm-hmm. and, and stuff going on. Like yeah. the, you know, I, you know, obviously I have no idea which one's correct, but they're kind of synonymous if you yeah. think about it. Anytime we see God delivering people, it's because he's spoken. And usually when we see him speak, people get delivered. Yeah. Which is a cool thought anyway. Yeah. I thought about, uh, you know, the part of the story that, that another part of the story you didn't get to yesterday was when, when they had the feast, you know, there was a separation there, which you, you brought up in, in the, your sermon was, you know, was a huge deal in itself, them eating together because, you know, he's, as far as they know, he's an Egyptian mm-hmm. and these are Hebrew people and he, and he puts them in order and, you know, that whole scene, but he also gives Benjamin, Benjamin gets a bigger portion too. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I, you weren't here when they put me in the hole, you're going to get a little more, but you know, he, he's still yet to reveal himself through all these things that's happening in their life and, and in the money. And then I just, I thought about that yesterday, how often Christ reveals himself to us and we don't really, we don't see it. Mm-hmm. We don't see it as a, as a Christ influence in our life. Yeah. And you know, just that thought is, you know, how often he intervenes and we don't, we just say that, well, that's life. No, it's, it's, it's more than that. You know, it's Christ. But that, that interaction in itself was, was huge Mm -hmm. for, for them to be able to sit in, well, number two, number two Egyptian, right? You know, nobody, really nobody higher than Pharaoh, other than Pharaoh. For him to bring them in was that it's an act of grace in itself. So, mm-hmm. in our in our accounts, for us to when we get when when we finish the race, we get to heaven. Kind of the same parallel there mm-hmm. in my mind. You know, wow, that's going to be that's going to be huge. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, yeah. One of the things I was actually just thinking about there was like, you know, with Joseph unknowingly acting like Christ. Um, in a lot of ways, just brings about all of this good, fruitful stuff in to his surroundings, whether it's the cupbearer or to Pharaoh or to his brothers or to the nation of Egypt. Um, 
you know, I think often I'm looking at that and being like, wow, look how cool the Bible is of like Joseph pointing to Jesus and then kind of gets you thinking of like, what kind of impact can we also have if we were also acting as what our name is, Christian, little mm -hmm. Christ, you know, if we're also to be, albeit poor imitations of Christ, um, what kind of cool deliverance opportunities of restoration and peace and blessings can we see God do through us as we Im imitate Christ the same way that Joseph unknowingly was imitating Christ because he was ahead of the time, um, kind of in the same way. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, that ripple effect, you know, that we could see in our lives would be if we <laughs> if we acted by what we were called. Yeah. Yeah. How much would that how much would that change? Um, our community and our everything around us really. Yeah. So um any anything else you didn't get to yesterday that you wanted to and there's there's all kinds of little details and that's true from the dyna family dynamic. You know, that's one of the things Thomas preached the uh, second message in this series. Um, and it was a lot to do with the family dynamic, you know, and, and we can really see that, you know, in this, in these three chapters still playing out of this, you know, listen, they're a family, they're dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And and if you don't have, if you can't identify a, at least one dysfunctional member of your family, tag, you're it, you know, it's <laughs> like, that's just, that's the thing. So I think it's just so relatable that we see kind of this dynamic unfolding in front of us as we read this story. Yeah. So the, yeah, the family aspect of it, I didn't get into, but it, that's just, it's there. Go back and read it and just see. And, and again, put yourself in this place, try to put yourself in this place where you're disconnected from knowing the entirety of the story and just try to see it in the moment. Uh, it's pretty incredible to do that. Absolutely. Um, so some takeaways, final takeaways, I guess, from yesterday, Thomas, anything stand out to you in particular? Well, I think again, the thing that I'm probably just going to continue to take away is like you said, that, that main point just to chew on a little bit, you know, God offering grace at the expense of himself. I think mm -hmm. something yep. around those lines, you know, that's, that's just something to chew on. I think the whole story of Joseph, there's a lot to chew on yeah. um, because um, not to say that God, you know, does the same thing over and over again, you know, you know, it's not like rinse and repeat all the time, but God has a method to how he works yeah. and we can start to learn that method a little bit. You know, we see God using tragedy and hard times in the life of a believer. Um, and, and yeah, just the, that sort of thought of like God's grace being extended to us, not because we deserve it, not because we earn it, truly believing that, not just saying it and, and chewing on what it really means for the, the extent of that grace that we've been offered post-resurrection um uh at the expense of himself i think there's just so much that you could just marinate on in that um and what that means you know it's for the family unit as well like yeah. um at this point in the story we start to see joseph understanding that like god's blessing on him throughout everything is greater than vengeance that he could have mm -hmm. on his brothers and even even in the uh, much smaller version of that, we can have that same thought of like the the grace that God has offered us at the expense of Himself is greater than the the ven vengeance or the anger that I have at the lady in front of me in the car driving forty and a sixty, <laughs> whatever yeah, yeah. whatever it might be. And, you know, if we um, Sean was preaching over at his church on loving your enemies, and part of what he was saying was. Um, you know, Jesus is talking here about, you know, loving your enemies. Uh, and, you know, he's probably talking about people like the Roman soldiers who are coming in, stealing their money, potentially raping their wives. Or so, who knows? Who knows what it would be? Mm -hmm. Enemy. Enemy. Yeah. Um, and we take that and we apply it to, you know, the cashier who gave us the wrong amount of change back. You know, it's like, God, you're giving me your toughest battles. And it's like, well, let's have a bit of perspective here <laughs> <laughs> compared to yeah. what some other people have gone through, not to diminish what we face, but also, you know, have perspective. Yeah. Um, and if people are able to love their enemies, like the Romans, or Joseph's able to offer love and grace and care to his brothers, how much more can we also do that to those around us who are still impacting us, but nowhere near to that 
we're not being sold into Egypt. Yeah. You know, but I think, I think mine was, uh, just the surrender itself. Just, um, and, and how much better our lives are when we do give up, give it up. Like mm-hmm. you said, like Israel did, he finally had to give up when we do give up those pieces and parts that we're trying to control how much better things are for us. And we, we think we don't want to give them up because we don't, you know, we think things are going to be worse or things, you know, we, we're, we're afraid of lack of control. Even, even when God is the one yeah. that we're relinquishing that control to. Yeah. So, you know, I, and I think of the parallel with that, you know, take up your cross, follow me, deny ourselves, mm-hmm. take up our cross and follow Christ. And, and really it's thought of culturally. I think a lot of people who don't understand it, think of it as something that's, not not necessarily a good thing and it wasn't a good thing you know take up your cross was a term then that was like oh man that's 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 bad Mm -hmm. right but in terms of a believer how much sweeter life is when we are able to do that when things just fall into place when we you know instead of going eh, lord i don't eh, i don't know about when we just say yes lord (laughs) and how much things we see our life just fall into place yeah. regardless of what's going on. So the surrender piece of that really hit home with me yesterday. So. Yeah. Now there's, there's power in relinquishment. There really is. Um, and, and we see that we, we, we learned that lesson, that part of the surrender through Israel and Jacob, you know, this, this past Sunday. But if we look at the story, you know, holistically here then we see that continuously in the life of joseph that he's just continually relinquishing control of himself to god and and it's a really powerful powerful thing yeah well guys anything else i just next week source of life um if you want to read ahead Chapters 46 and 48 is what we're going to be covering. 47 is, we're skipping over that because we covered that in part whenever we looked at Exalted out of uh, chapter 41. So 46 and 48. Good deal. Well, I've I've had fun this summer. Uh, Please uh, be in prayer uh, this week as uh, teachers and teachers go back this week here locally and Mm -hmm. students next week. So uh, would would, uh, love prayers for that and uh, as always for our kids and you know teachers so uh hope to be back maybe some this fall we get some breaks in so i've, I've enjoyed this so yeah enjoyed having it. you thank you for, for yeah doing it brother yeah um guys as always you can find everything on the website um like share wherever you're seeing this at and but uh, everything is on the website the entire joseph study fccgrayson.com uh, and just check that out so Uh, Also, our calendar of events are on there also. So thanks for tuning in.